Hello everyone. Thank you to Jay Rigg, Conrad Adenauer Stiftung, and the Galing Pook Foundation for the opportunity to share with you some thoughts on a pressing issue that is confronting the country these days. And this is the return and reintegration of overseas Filipino workers that were displaced during this pandemic period. We've seen in the past few months, hundreds and thousands of overseas Filipino workers returning home as a result of the pandemic. Most of them are displaced, have lost their jobs, and face tremendous challenges and uncertainty. I'm posing three questions with regard to the issue. What measures did the national government undertake to address the needs of returning OFWs due to the pandemic? How can different stakeholders play a role in potential areas for policy intervention? What long-term solutions are needed to reintegrate OFWs displaced by this global health crisis? These are the parts that I will be covering in this discussion. When the COVID-19 outbreak was reported early this year, the Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infectious Diseases, or the IATF EID, was convened and became the main policy-making body on measures to combat COVID-19 in the country. A whole-of-government approach was adopted, emphasizing joint activities of all public agencies to provide a solution to the pandemic. With regard to OFW concerns, the Department of Foreign Affairs, the Department of Health, the Overseas Workers' Welfare Administration were at the forefront. The government had repatriated over 200,000 OFWs since the start of the year. Some 100,000 are still expected to arrive by the end of the year. It began with the repatriation of 30 Filipinos in January from Wuhan, China, the epicenter of the COVID-19 outbreak. And just last month, almost 42,000 OFWs were repatriated. About 75% came from the Middle East and the rest from Asia and the Pacific, the Americas, Europe, and Africa. The government had also put in place strict protocols. OFWs had to be tested at the airport upon arrival and are escorted by OWA representatives to assigned accommodations for the mandatory 14-day quarantine period. When test results are released, they are given a certificate of completion of quarantine, after which they can return to their home destinations. The government was also quick to provide relief assistance to OFWs. All stranded OFWs were given 10,000 pesos each, drawn from the OWA Trust Fund and the Dole ACAP program. In March, OWA and the Department of Transportation launched the Hatid Sundo program for stranded OFWs, which provided free transport service to and from the Ninoy Aquino International Airport. Insofar as LGUs are concerned, the IATF issued Resolution 22 of 2020, calling upon LGUs to facilitate the safe and unhampered passage of OFW returnees from quarantine facilities to their provinces and residences after completing the mandatory quarantine period. Despite these government efforts to assist returning OFWs during this crisis, there is still more to be done to effectively address their plight. The assistance currently provided for by government are only stopgap measures. The key is to strengthen the reintegration of OFWs as a long-term solution. 
Reintegration actually involves a package of government interventions to facilitate the successful entry or re-entry of OFWs into the mainstream of Philippine society. OWA administers the Balik Pinas, Balik Hanap Buhay program, which extends a maximum of 20,000 pesos as loan for OWA members. OWA also manages the Overseas Filipino Workers Enterprise Development and Loan Program in partnership with the Land Bank of the Philippines and the Development Bank of the Philippines. OFW entrepreneurs can avail of loans from 100,000 to 5 million pesos as capital for business. The DOLE, for its part, has the Assist Well program, which includes capacity building such as financial literacy, training, support for OFW family circles, counseling, and legal assistance. In targeting the needs of returning OFWs during this pandemic, I would like to focus on these three areas, livelihood, healthcare, and legal assistance. The immediate need of returning OFWs is income. And cash for work can serve as an alternative means, although short term, for them to earn income. This is aside from job placement with potential local employers. And while recently repatriated OFWs were given cash assistance of 10,000 pesos, this amount is insufficient to tide them over for an unknown period of time. Retooling through training and applying transferable skills for employment can be helpful. Actually, opportunities abound for e-commerce among OFWs. Most OFWs are digitally literate and connected. They know how to use mobile phones, the internet, and social media as they communicate with friends and family, access entertainment, and transfer remittances while abroad. They can capitalize on their technological know-how during this period, especially to market products and services they can offer from home. OFWs definitely have skills they can apply to the home country when they return. The work of government, private sector, and nonprofit organizations is to create the environment and opportunity for this. The most significant among the social protection benefits that OFWs need, especially this period, is health care. While they may have access to fill health and supplemental medical assistance extended by DOH and OWA, this is not adequate for other contingencies such as medicines, doctor's fees, and additional laboratory tests. OFW returnees experience stress and anxiety, especially when they return without jobs and much savings. Expanding health coverage to include mental health care can lessen their vulnerability. Aside from government, insurance companies also have a role to play by offering low-cost health insurance designed specifically for OFWs. These interventions need to be reincorporated in public health efforts where the national government, LGUs, non-government organizations, and local migrant networks can collaborate. There are instances when OFW claims for their benefits take a long time to be released or are even withheld by recruitment and manning agencies, especially during situ situations of emergency. Sometimes they're not even provided with insurance coverage required by law. Sanctions can be imposed on violations through legislation. 
the migrant organizations, and even the migrant party list in the House of Representatives can advocate for this. When conflicts arise between OFWs and recruitment or manning agencies, concerned government agencies can provide a pool of accredited lawyers who can offer free legal assistance to OFWs in need. A dual approach for policy intervention can be adopted, one addressing short-term needs, such as relief assistance, and another for long-term post-COVID-19 requirements through reintegration. A 3Cs guidepost is suggested for reintegration to be effective and sustainable. First is communication and contacts. Aside from the OASIS or the OFW Assistance Information Tracking System, OWA and DOLE are in a good position to create a database that can have long-term applications, particularly that which can help facilitate business networking for OFW entrepreneurs or skills matching for local employment. Another one is CARE. This pertains to providing substantial health care, including for mental health. It also includes care for their dependents, which can be in the form of tuition subsidies for their children. On collaborative efforts, reintegration involves well-coordinated initiatives from national agencies, LGUs, migrant organizations, and other stakeholders. LGUs can do a lot more for OFW returnees by ensuring their representation in local development councils and incorporating their concerns in local development plans. If the needs of returning OFWs for sustainable livelihood, social protection, and community support are met in the long term, this would allow them to remain in the country as productive citizens. So, here are my main points. Immediate needs of returning OFWs displaced by the pandemic entail multi-sectoral interventions. Collaboration among national and local governments, Congress, migrant organizations, and the private sector are imperative. What we see as stopgap measures are not enough. The need is to strengthen the National Reintegration Program as a long-term solution. On the whole, the contribution of OFWs to the country's economic development is undeniably significant. With the current pandemic, we expect a decrease in the amount of remittances as more OFWs return home. The challenge is to transform returning OFWs as an agile workforce given current conditions so that whether they decide to stay or work again overseas, it would not be out of necessity but out of choice. Thank you.